Alrighty, good day and welcome. My name is Mr. Bent. Today we're going to be going through a dual exposure using Photopea. Uh, Photopea is just our online free uh, photo editing software, so we're going to be using that. It's super free, super easy to use, and we're going to be creating a dual exposure using Doctor Strange. Uh, dual exposure is really just combining two images to create one image. There's a lot of different variations to how you can make these look. Um, totally numerous amounts of styles, but I'm going to be showing you one. I'm going to be walking through one today uh, in Photopea using uh, Dr. Stephen Strange. Now, when you're going through and when you're creating these things on Photopea, you want to make sure that they are high quality images. So whatever images you're using that you're dragging and dropping into Photopea, they've got a high pixel count, they're high resolution. Otherwise, they'll be blurry or grainy or pixelated, which isn't going to look very good for your final product. And if we're going to do this, we want it to look as good as possible and look its mostest bestest. So over here on my other screen, I'm just going to be dragging in my image of Doctor Strange. It'll load, take a couple seconds, bam, there's my image of Doctor Strange. And then I'm going to drag in my second image, which is going to be the one that I'm going to be overlaying in a little bit. You'll see when I drop this in, it is pretty small. Um, I do want this to be pretty big, almost take up most of the space on Doctor Strange. Uh, depending on what you're doing or what style of image you're doing or how you're going to do this, some people might just throw this image in the hair or they might just throw it in his hand or they might throw this into his necklace. Uh, there's lots of different variations to how you can do a dual exposure. For me, I'm going to be covering basically from his neck down um, with this image. So that's my goal for stretching this image out. And when I grab this, I don't just want to grab the corner and start pulling because it'll distort the image. Um, it might stretch some things and make it look kind of crappy, which isn't what we want. So instead, I'm going to press and hold shift and then I'm going to drag this down. Um, bring that down roughly. We're going to throw it about there uh, just so that way we can fade some of that uh, space into Dr. Strange's face in a little bit. Um, but we'll see that when we're throwing this in, he's kind of facing an odd direction. Um, you'll see when I remove that image, uh, kind of shutting off that eye, um, his face will end up being here, which will look a little bit funny, so we don't want that. So we're going to end up rotating this image. I'm just going to grab it and give it a nice spin and close enough to zero, uh, as close as you can get, or you can actually just throw in your zeros there. Uh, awesome. Um, now we're going to just turn this off. We don't want to be able to view this for right now. We're going to be playing with our original Doctor Strange image. Now we want to select everything around him and we want to remove that. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can grab the pen tool and you can draw lines all across, zoom in and draw lines for days. Um, some images you may have to do that. That's not what I'm going to be doing for this image. I'm gonna be doing something a different way. I'm gonna be using the magic wand tool. Magic wand tool is gonna to help me select some stuff. You'll see as soon as I click that, it's made this little dashy box around that area. Now I wanna do a whole bunch of these so that way I can grab all of the image and all of the distortion around Doctor Strange, all of this gray stuff. So I'm gonna hold the shift key down the entire time I'm doing this. I'm just gonna keep clicking in all of this gray area. So that way I can get as close to Doctor Strange as possible. If I pressed on the red, it would start grabbing all those red pixels. So make sure that when you're pressing, you're clicking it around in the gray, you're pressing in the gray. Um, I usually press it quite a few times, make sure that there's no weird spots. And then, awesome. Now I'm just gonna press the backspace, which is going to delete everything there. Awesome. Now this is looking good, but it's not perfect. We've got a little bit of distortion here, which is fine. We won't notice that, but what we will notice is the gray in the hair. So we're gonna zoom into this hair. Um, every image is gonna be different, but you wanna try and make this as clean as possible. So I'm gonna go back and use the magic wand tool. I'm just gonna delete as many of these little segments as I can, just to make this look a little bit more legit, a little bit more professional. Bam, bam, and you get the idea. I'm not gonna spend 10, 20 minutes removing all of these things for right now in this demo, but that's what your goal is, is to try and make this as clean as possible. So you've got your image, you've got your background removed, however you chose to remove that background. Again, you could have used the, the pen tool and just kind of drawn around and then selected and then deselected whichever you wanted to do. Um, for now, we're gonna go back to our magic wand tool. And now's when we're gonna start kind of messing with that secondary image. So I'm gonna press the space around Doctor Strange and you'll see that it has all of the little hash marks, the invisible barrier, the invisible background is now all selected. 
Awesome, that's what we want for our first bit. So you've got that selected. You're gonna right click and you're gonna select inverse, which means it's selecting everything else. Now you'll see that those hash marks are around Doctor Strange. Now we're gonna go back to our layer that we have hidden over here in the right in our layers menu and we're gonna turn that on. Now you'll see that all those little dash marks are on this image as well. So that means that everything that is here, everything that is in this place, um, that we can see inside those hash marks, that is what's going to be selected. So if we need to move around this image one last time to make sure that everything is good, now is the time to do that. And then you're just going to press Control C and Control V. That's gonna lock in this image selection. I'm gonna shut off that original image. And now you can see that we have Doctor Strange floating, kind of morphed into Doctor Strange. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna mess with a little bit of opacity with this and in terms of my fill. So I'm gonna go up to my layer one and I'm going to go to my opacity. I'm gonna drop that down. This is kind of personal preference and it also depends on your image. I do wanna see some of Doctor Strange through this because I really like the little hand magic. Um, so we're gonna do that and we're gonna go to our fill and we're gonna kind of mess around with these a little bit till we find something that really suits what we want for this image. Again, all personal preference in terms of how you want this to look and awesome. That's where I'm happy with it for right now. Now we're gonna turn these into some smart layers so we can end up making some other stuff show through, uh, make some fades th show through, stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a raster mask. So on layer one, which is my on top of layer, I'm going to click here to add a raster mask and you'll see I added this secondary box. So your raster mask is just down here in the bottom right corner and you'll see that it kind of looks like a camera or like a rectangle with a circle in it, however you wanna call it. Um, you've got your rectangle selected um, on layer one, awesome. So if we draw with layer one selected, anything in black, so if I click in here in this bottom left menu with those double squares, drag it all the way to the corner to get black and select the paintbrush, whichever one you want. Um, I usually pick the little faded one. I don't need the hardness too high and make your size fairly large for most of this. Um, 500 for me seems like that's gonna do pretty good. Close that away. And then as I draw with black over top of Dr. Strange's face, you'll see that you can see it a lot more clearly. And also in our layer one raster mask, you'll see that all that black is starting to show up. Now I'm just gonna go around Dr. Strange just so you can kind of see a little bit more of the outline of him and the colors from him. And now you can see all of that through. Now, next few steps are a little bit more personal preference, but I'm gonna show you what I like to do in terms of these. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna select my background layer, which is just our regular Doctor Strange, and we're gonna turn him into black and white. Uh, it's gonna help make some of these other colors pop, and then we can make some of those reds and those yellows kind of pop a little bit more. Um, so with that selected, we're gonna go down here to this new adjustment layer, which is this half circle. You're gonna click on that and we're gonna go all the way up to hue and saturation. Once we've selected hue and saturation, we're gonna drag saturation basically all the way down. You can kind of mess with that, how you want that to look. That looks kind of funky, but that's not what I wanna go for. So I'm gonna drag that down to pretty much nothing, um, all the way to negative 100. If you wanna change the lightness, darkness, however you wanna do that, um, totally up to you. Again, this is a lot of personal preference. Um, I'm happy with that sitting there and awesome. So same idea how we did the um, showing the other image through with the brush. With that brush tool still selected and selected on black, if I click on the, the white box of the hue and saturation, and if I went over Dr. Strange's face, you'll see that that went color. I don't want his face to be color, but I might want there to be a little bit more color showing through on this, on his little magic circle. I might want a little bit more of that orangey showing through. And maybe I want a little bit more of that yellow for his medallion to be showing through with the Infinity Stone. Um, again, a lot of personal preference on how you wanna do this, but I've just added some more colors to make some certain things pop. Maybe you wanted to add a little bit more of the reds of his coat. Again, a lot of personal preference. Now, if you end up doing too much, so let's say you did a couple extra dots and you didn't want to do those, all you need to do is one, either Control Z, which is your undo, or you can go back into here, into your color, and you can select white instead. Once you've selected white, you can now draw back over top, 
and that's kind of like erasing all of that and that will end up removing that color for that layer same idea if i went back in here and i used the white um, it will not show through as much in those edges same as we had before awesome so that is how we do our dual exposure. That's how I'm going to be demonstrating doing a dual exposure in this exercise. I'll have a couple more of these coming because there is a handful of variations that you can do different styles, different ways. Um, but this is the way that we're, I'm going to be running through for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching uh, and I will catch you all in the next video. Take care and be safe.